accesstv.org, grassroots social media television. AccessTV.org, your family, your friends, we are where you are. Welcome to another series of Education One. We have a lady that is actually, I, I, I'm speechless really. Her name is Hai Sunyeti. She runs the most powerful NRZ in Hartford. She is actually uh, a forefront person of actually fighting education or bringing our kids in education up to speed. She's been doing it for a number of years. She's a friend of mine. I love this lady. Welcome to the show, Mrs. H. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> How everything's going with you? Uh, the Four Walls Project is it's going, uh -huh. and uh, MC Square is still, uh, I guess, to me, um, still pushing towards the, the uh, pushing forward in, in what we're trying to do and actually bring our kids uh, within math and science and, and the other arts and stuff that we're trying to do. We've been doing it for a number of years since past Lanier, so I'm not gonna give up the ghost on it. Oh, we're good. Keep moving. Yeah, because you know our mm. our kids do need that supplement, you know, mm -hmm. um, for the what they're not fully getting in our school, and and that's mm. too sad because, you know, years ago, um, again, I hate to beat the dead horse. I mean, years ago, all our school had music, arts, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, cooking, everything right. you can think of that helps a kid grow to become that mm. individual that. You know, so when they get off to college, they can feel they were well-rounded. You know, right, they got right. a little bit of everything in school. Right. And as you know, with the the former um, superintendent Stephen Asabaski right. and um, oh, the other the superintendent outgoing, that's yeah, now Kishimoto, in, yeah. they came in with this um, pie in the sky dream about what they want to see. So, mm -hmm. because of that, all these programs, these specials that we call, because you know, kids always have special, especially mm -hmm. when they get to high school. <laughs> right. They have these special, now all these special things were taken out and turned into academies. Mm -hmm. You know, and the point is, um, <clears throat> so therefore, if you're not in one of these academies, you don't get all the things that you need to make you grow as an individual. And, 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 and as we, we talked about before, it's not the color of colors, the color of actually who you are, what you are, and it comes down to really politics. Yes, it is all about politics. politics it's is. not about, you know, the way I look at it and I have examined it really carefully, mm -hmm. it's not about children. Mm -hmm. It's about what they come in and say, well, you know what, I did this and I did that. Whether it was good for the children or not, it doesn't really matter to them. Right. Okay, because they want to say, I came in and did this. But does anyone ever stop to think, is this or are these things good for children? Right. Are we giving the children the foundation to make them be good citizens, you know, in, in society? We're not, we're not doing that anymore. You know, the, the, the crazy part when I speak to, to producers of the show uh, or the director or the owner, and some other people, the powers to be within the Hartford region, we just have, we just, we just didn't touch, come to Hartford. We've been here for a while. Yeah. So when, when, when Mrs. H or Stan McCauley or some other people that we know speak on this particular show, this is not no pie in the We're sky. We're speaking we, because it's coming from the heart and we know. Right, we know We've exactly. We've seen it. Exactly. You know, we, we know it. It's exactly. Not a, it's not, we're not just phrasing off things. Right. We know it. These things are what we've seen and know. We've seen the changes, the right. worst changes. Right. Okay? Take, for instance, just recently, all right, we talked about teachers. Mm -hmm. When you look at teaching profession these days, mm -hmm. you wonder how many kids are actually from graduate from Car, from high, high school, school, going to college mm -hmm. and saying, oh, you know what? I want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, these two successors, um, superintendent, mm -hmm. they have came in, and I think this is happening all over the world, all over the country. Mm -hmm. They've came in and they have destroyed Which, what, what, what the Harvard value of being a teacher. Mm -hmm. And because of that, 
teachers are not saying, well, yeah, I'm going off to college anymore for teaching. Because you know what? You can just go to college to go to college, and then you can just come back in and just be a teacher mm -hmm. because you don't have to have that certification anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what they have put us to. The point is that everyone who becomes a teacher has to go through a couple of years of really right. certification. Mm -hmm. If you notice what we call, they call them the um, Teach of America. Mm -hmm. That is what they're doing. And they're, they're doing this for a certain reason. They want to kill the unions. Mm -hmm. As you know, I've heard over the country, mm -hmm. the union has been the weakest right, in weakest. how many years. Right, right. Over, All right? Yeah, we've been around over and, 100 years. And <laughs> I'm not saying I'm the favorite of unions. But the point is, union is formed because of injustice sometimes. A check and balance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when you destroy them, and union can be bad and they can be good. Mm -hmm. But when you destroy their morals of compass of what really needs to be, mm -hmm. you're saying that they're, you're not, you're, your union, you're not needed anymore, right. to be honest with you. All right. So because of that, let, let's bring in all these teachers that doesn't have any certification for teaching. Mm -hmm. And these are what are teaching our children. All right. They don't know about classroom, classroom organization. Mm -hmm. How do you organize a room? Mm -hmm. They don't know how to control these kids. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they don't have those sense of, um, you know, ability to do those things. I, I, you know, and then the first thing they'll say, oh, these kids are out of control. But they love to come to urban settings because when they come to urban settings, oh, yeah, yeah, I've taught in urban settings. So everybody thinks they're super good because they taught in the urban setting. I, I, I look at, for a good example, when we started the first after school program in, on Barber Street, we had three elementary schools. We had Clark, Wish, and Waverly. And Dr. Thomas ran... Waverly School. <coughs> so Waverly School became a magnet school or academy of to this day. The funny thing about it is most of the teachers at that time in the early 2000s, from, I think from 2001 to 2005 before he actually left the school, he had mostly white teachers from actually the surrounding towns that built up the credibility mm -hmm. of Waverly. You look at Waverly now, Waverly have actually went backwards. Dr. Thomas is actually the head of the Board of Education in Bloomfield. And he's which, doing a super job, I heard. And Bloomfield is actually is a different mix than actually Hartford. So what he did, he learned from Exactly. From Waverly to being an assistant uh, uh, superintendent, the do's and the don'ts. Exactly. But Bloomfield has a different mindset than Hartford. The sad part about it is when Dr. Albomowski continued and brought in Dr. Kishimoto they stayed stagnant. They wasn't listening. I asked Dr. Um, uh, Avamowski to talk to him in, uh, it was December of uh, 2007, and I was um, talking, I was sitting right with um, our ex, uh, former mayor, um, Saxon, Saxon Perry. Oh, that's right. I was I sitting next to her uh, in Weaver High School, the old Weaver. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll get back to you. To this day, we never had a meeting. When he left and went to Wyndham School, I says, the graduation rate of kids in Hartford is very low. No, he will tell you, no, they're highest than before. He said, he says, no, you're <clears> wrong, <throat> Samuel. The graduation rate is high. I says, what are you talking about? The kids in the surrounding towns put together or just the kids in Hartford? He said, just, it just graduation is high. No, and you know and, why and it that, was that high. that was a lie. But do you know why it was high? Because he was telling those um, principals, you tell those teachers, those kids have to be graduated. I don't care what you do. Mm -hmm. you, don't you tell me you graduated kids with 55 or 50 point average. Right. Now, where is that kids going? That's where why, are those kids going? That's why the community college right now with freshmen is 60%. They can't even know even math that, and science. But the, the colleges are getting killed right that's now. That's exactly what I'm saying because they're not prepared to go even to community college. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. So you imagine what is filling up our, like, Connecticut College or right. CCM right. College. Right. You know, those colleges cannot accept those kids because they don't have the qualification. Patient. Exactly. And then the Capital College or the Manchester College of the of the community are overwhelmed. They can't some of those kids they can't even take in because they're exactly. not qualified to be even there. Exactly. So that's what he graduated. Right. Right. So when he's out there boasting to the state 
and boasting to everyone, he reminds me of Perry now. Right. He reminds me of Perry. <laughs> Going around lying about how his graduation rate is 100%. But again, we go back to the question is, right. how much is the 100%? Right. All right? These are not just kids that are coming from suburb or wherever. These kids are hard for kids right. that weren't prepared from elementary, elementary right. and now they're in high school and they can't function. Mm -hmm. Then you graduate those kids and say they're going off to Capital Community College and they can't function in Capital Community College either. But when they hear the statistics, what we say, and come back to beginning argument as we talked about, they want to say, well, they don't know what they're talking about, but we've been in the system we long. Know. We've been we in know. System, we've been in the system longer than you, but we would know. Okay. We do know. And the only reason why teachers can't talk about those things, because they sign of oath exactly. of nana. But they can talk to me. Exactly. They can talk to you. Exactly. They can talk to other people. Right. Okay, and let them know the truth about these exactly. things. Exactly. And that's what needs to be told. Right. Okay? So they're always coming up with another program, another program. Right. Now, okay, so they've gone into the Common Core. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, what is Common Core? It's supposed to be a basic all around. Right, for all the states. Okay, for all. And it's supposed to be rigorous. Right. Okay? But here's what happened to Hartford, and it happens over and over. Mm -hmm. Years ago, we had a program named Success for All. Right. And I heard that was an excellent program. Mm -hmm. However, if you don't fully implement it, it never works. Mm -hmm. And this is why teachers are so worried about this in Hartford, and, and maybe over the country in general, but in Hartford, because they're never going to put the money to make it work. Mm -hmm. So it's always somebody that's making money off our kids. Mm -hmm. Our kids have become the guinea pig of everything. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So now... We're going to put this common core in, but we're not going to make sure everything that needs to be in mm. is in. Mm. So now it looks like, oh, our teachers are failures. They fail our children. They mm. can't do it. They, mm. That is wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm. If you're going to tell me to bake a cake, mm. give me all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Then if I don't put those ingredients in and mm. it doesn't bake it's not gonna well. It's not going to rise. It's not going to rise. It's not going to rise. Yeah. So then you can blame me. But if you don't give me the ingredient, mm -hmm. don't blame me for, for that. <laughs> what, what kind of articles you have? Well, <clears throat> well, this one, it says, um, shouldn't lose teachers with passion. Well, we are losing teachers with passion because teachers realize that they're not teaching anymore. Is that the Hartford Current? Yeah, this is the Hartford Current. That okay. was January 28th. Okay. Okay, and this was in the opinion piece. Okay. So too much, too much put on teachers. Okay? Yeah. Common core and fear. Okay? Fearly. Uh, Manglity. <laughs> okay, so there's a whole lot of stuff in here about these things that needs to happen. That's not happening. All right? When your teacher lose the passion for teaching because of all the mandate that comes down on a daily basis, yeah. oh, I need data for this, data for that, data for that. And all you think about is data. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to teach your kids. Mm -hmm. Now tell me whose fault is that? Well, you know, the, the sad part about it is, is that over the years of when, when Adam Mousey came in, there's some things had to be changed. No question about that. But what he did and put his foot in his mouth, both of them did, is that they never went out and surveyed and even talked to other people. He actually just pushed it through and became, and became a bully well, over it. Well, it's not and a it, matter of people. Who is in the classroom? Tell me. The teachers. Right. So wouldn't you have gone to your teacher first to say, okay, guys, do a survey, do I something. need to know. Tell me what's working, what's not working. Exactly. Give me your ideas. No, but you're right. They come in with this bully mentality like right. they know. No, you've never taught a day in your life, but right. you think you can come in and tell a teacher how to teach. I think, you know, the, 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 the crazy thing about this whole thing about certain principles on actually downtown Hartford, all the way back to say Woodland Street. What kills Hartford is a lot of the principals have the good kids because that is actually how they wanted it. It was by design, but most of the principals are very arrogant. And that's what kills the whole thing to me. Well, depending on who you, you talk to about that. Um, you know, as a parent, okay, I have, and I, and, and I want to emphasize this, always with parent. If your kids are not in that school, they don't have a job, mm -hmm. okay? Those principals doesn't have a job. Mm -hmm. Now, as a parent, I want 
other parents to feel the power right. of knowing this is my child. Because as I read this cycle, it says, here's what children need. Parents must be collaborative with teachers. Exactly. Okay? But it's not. What better proof? I have that proof. Because, because you're, when my kids were going to school, school exactly. it was that collaboration. Right. Okay? It was, yes, what do I do now? What's the next move? What, you know? Right. What can I do to make sure my child is getting the best? Or what should, like, you know, things like that. I got to stop you on that note. We have to go pay some bills. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back on the second half of uh, Education One. We'll be right back. At Hartford Public Schools, we care about one thing above all, the future of our kids. That's why we're dedicated to providing all students with the knowledge and skills needed in the new global culture. Hartford Public Schools is thriving. More student success stories, more world-class facilities, more university and corporate partnerships, more amazing talent coming and staying in Hartford. This is how education is supposed to work. Welcome to Hartford Public Schools, where the future is present. Welcome back to the show of Education One. We have Hai Sinietti of the NRZ out of uh, Maple, the NRZ out of Maple Avenue, one of the most powerful NRZs. She is actually a powerful force that is in education. She goes to all the educational meetings, you wouldn't believe, for the last 20 years. And um, believe me, she does not stop at what she does. Mrs. H, coming back to what we were talking about, the teachers and actually the parents. Yes, as, as this article uh, mentioned, it was uh, by Elizabeth A. Natal. Nat mm. right. um, she lives in Glastonbury. Okay. Um, but this is, uh, this is no secret, mm -hmm. okay, why children do better when parents are involved. Okay. And we, we hear a lot of people come up with a lot of excuses. Okay, so yeah, parents have to have two jobs, so they can't afford to be there for their children and stuff like that. Well, I'm saying, if you want the best out of your children, mm. you're going to find ways and means to right. make sure right. I had a job when my kids were going to school, but my top priority was my children, okay? In the articles that, that I've seen over the last year, a lot of articles actually came out of Glastonbury. Now, Glastonbury school system is no joke, and Glastonbury considered themselves as, as a Greenwich. Yes. You know, that's how they look yes. at it because it was one of the top top uh, counties within the Hartford region. But I've seen a lot of articles come out of people that actually live in Glastonbury, which it, which it's like the outside looking in to a problem that they come in and trying to help and it cannot be fixed because no, no one's listening. No one, <clears throat> no one, people at the top do not want it to get fixed no. because they always have to claim they have a problem and they have to fix and they want more money and they want more money. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, just recently I went to the um, State Board of Vacation meeting, mm -hmm. okay, because I had to lay it out to them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I lay out to them was we are more segregated now, mm -hmm. not by just race, mm -hmm. but by quality, all right? Mm -hmm. Continue to be. Here it is when Chef versus Old Neil came into place. It was about making sure there's quality for all children. Mm -hmm. All children, not mm -hmm. just some and some don't. Mm -hmm. Okay? But who take it and twist it like this to say I have to bring in the white kid from the suburbs mm -hmm. to make it work? Well, that is not right. <laughs> that is just the continued mentality of slavery. That's down the learning okay? that the learning corridor been like that for a number of years. Well, it's not only the learning corridor now. It's 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 all these magnet schools that they're right, right, they're putting names right. and labels on. Right, right. Okay, right. now our parents are in the in this qualm about okay, well, where do I send my kid now? Where do I send my kid? You know, they're they're so busy fighting for a place into somewhere where they think it's good. Mm -hmm. Well, the way I look at it, I said, stay in your neighborhood and fight for what you need in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at arts mm -hmm. in our school. Mm -hmm. Arts, music, drama, whatever. Right, right, all of it, yeah. A part of a development of a child mm -hmm. from early kindergarten mm -hmm. way back until high school. Right. Now, I went to the state board and I said, look, we don't need another 
$33 million building in our city. We've got too much building in the city. That doesn't work. We don't have anyone to maintain them. Mm -hmm. Okay? The state is not going to maintain them. No, they're not going to do it. All right? I said, why put $33 million in a school building to build a high school for the arts when we could do it in a much cheaper way? What did they say? By making sure. Well, they're not a responsive kind of uh, right, team. Right, they just sat there and looked at you. They just they didn't look at me. But they, I think they got my message. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, if all our children have access to music, arts, and all the dramas of everything that goes on from kindergarten to high school, you'll see a better outcome mm -hmm. in school. Because kids like, most kids love music, mm -hmm. okay? But then the other part is, okay, so recently they turned some school into some commissioner school, recently. Mm -hmm. And I said, where do you think that money's going that you're giving it to this Hartford Board of Education? I said it's going to hire more consultants, consultants. Why do we need consultants? We as parents can be consultants. Well, we know what our children need. I said, I said to Dr. Kishimoto uh, when she actually verbally promised me that I could actually help her when after school program before she said no. And I said, you know, if you got some people like myself or you and actually broke up the neighborhoods and let them do their after school program, you can almost do it for free. You still have to pay like for some food and, and odds and ends, some books and some laptops, but you come out a lot cheaper and you can utilize the community centers. Well, Sam, we have some in schools. Exactly. S Sam Cephas MC Square or Stan or whatever, we're not the only ones on the planet or Mrs. H, there's other people like ourselves. If you really put our minds together, like the gentleman is doing a thing off of Albany Avenue, he's still got a little ways to go, but it's still, it still takes money. Funny thing about it is, there's people out there like that. Yes, and you people can, like to do that. And you right. know why, you, you know why people like Aaron Lewis doesn't right. get the Board of Education involved in that it's too much. much politics. Because it's too much politics. Exactly. He doesn't want no one pull his string and tell him. Right. So and therefore he goes to independent people and say, hey, I have a situation here where I can help kids. Exactly. And you know, he started his program and it's working perfect. He said he's never seen such kids so hunger right. for learning. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So those are the things that we need. Right. The, the way the system is set up in our school district it's setting up our children for continuous failure. Right. And if you are not that child that want it, right. then you know what's restaurant. You it, fall right through the cracks. It, it's, it's something that when I see the kids today in Hartford, and I talk to the kids in Hartford, and I talk to them all the time, and I, I says, you know, what is the problem that you have in school today? Oh, Mr. Sam, you know, they, they don't really listen. Some of the teachers, I know they just this, that, they, boom, 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 boom. I said, do they really understand who you are? Well, you know, I don't really say that much because I don't think they're really listening to me. So when someone thinks that you're not listening to them, they're going to say very little to you. The respectability is not there. And the kids today is not like us. Oh, kids today are totally we, we, disrespectful. Right. We, so know. teacher has all that to deal with. Right, exactly. Okay? And again, let me tell you again, I want to say it over and over. These mandates, okay, that is put from the superintendent to the principal to the teachers mm -hmm. about daters, mm -hmm. that's all they think about. <laughs> so you, you, you have 23 kids or 30 kids in your classroom, and you, only, you spend more time on data than actually who came instruction. Up, let me ask you a question, and I don't know if you know this answer or not. Who came up with the idea to build an arts Art school. Oh, okay. So uh, I got to tell you about that. Yeah, because that's really interesting. The state, because the state says it's a part of chef deal. Okay? And chef said we have to build this and we have to build that. All right? Well, they're not. Chef didn't tell them no, to do all no, that. They didn't say that. Here's what I, happened. I, I, read, I read that. So <clears> and I'm that. writing it in an article because that's, that's I got to say, it's not about chef. It's about the politician who can give the, con the, the, um, the contract to this person and that person, okay? But they're willing to f just drop a building in Hartford and don't worry about all the other buildings that we have in Hartford that doesn't pay taxes, and we, taxpayer, have to bear that brunt of everything, right. okay? But no, it was a state that says you need to build that 
$33 million high school. So here's what happened. So the parents have, they have a K-8, a Kinsella. Right. So apparently after K-8, these parents are saying, well, where do I go from here? Well, you know what? I think it would be good if they go back to their home school if they need to. Or making sure that all our high school in Hartford right. has quality music and arts so our children could be feeders into those schools. I, I know. But they're not thinking about that I way. Know, I know that this idea came up about four years ago. I'm not going to mention any names, but I know that, that the Hartford stage, the Bushnell, and some other people was approached to them by the state and says, why don't you run this arts school? And I said to every, I said to a few people, well, who's going to pay for this? Because you guys really don't have a lot of money. No. So I'm saying, who's going to pay for all this? When they said, Chef O'Neill. Chef O'Neill don't have they, money? They never came up with nothing. I read, I read that stuff. They never came it up with It was just nothing. a mandate that they put out there. Okay? That's all. And, and the worst part about it, the city of Hartford has to build this thing then they may get reimbursed if they remember to send the state a bill. All right? You know how much money the state owes the city because they haven't billed the state for these buildings that they've built? Millions. All right. But they won't be getting that money because for what I was told, yeah, yeah, city, you can come, but you ain't getting anything. But see, the thing about right? it is, the why are we still raising taxes <clears throat> on a $3.5 billion deficit that... You know, Governor Rell left, Governor Malloy takes over, and the thing about it is, everything underneath the sun is taxed. Exactly. Everything is but taxed. But the point is, what I'm trying to say, why would the city of Hartford agree to build another building? That just why crazy. don't they stop, look, and see? I went to the, the, the council meeting just recently and said, look, you guys need to do an assessment on all these buildings that we have in the city. That belongs to school, Okay. Because most of these schools are not filled anymore. Because you know why? Our kids are so scattered that we don't have full buildings anymore. Mm. They're gone from the neighborhood. They're busted out to some other suburban town. Mm -hmm. And our schools are suffering. And yeah. you want to build another building? Mm. And, and here's what one of the parents got up to the podium and said from the suburbs. Well, I don't feel safe with my kids going to school in the north end. Well, too bad I hadn't I had spoke before. But another parent came on and says, "Well, if this parents don't feel safe, why is she sending her kid into Hartford?" It's free. Huh? No, but but the woman the woman who spoke from from um from the suburb says, "Well, I'm afraid to send my kids here to school. Plus, the state is paying for my kids to come to school here." Like she was doing us a favor. And look, it says free. Send her kid to school here. It's a freebie. Okay? Mm -hmm. So here it is that we're supposed to be doing arts and music so suburban kids can come in and access, but we're not building it for our children to make sure all of them have that art and music that well, they need. You know, it, it's, it's, it's something that if we sat down with the people that actually pulled all the strings, you got to ask them. What are you thinking? Well, honey, I am going to the State Board of Education whenever I can, mm -hmm. and I put those questions there. Who's, That's something for them to think who's, about. Who's, who's the top, who's the top uh, chief, chiefs up at, the, at the State Board now? So, Teresa's I, I, I know it was um, Alan Taylor. I think right. they have some assist, uh, right. you know, vice person that, um, uh, I'm not sure how much Alan Taylor hadn't seen there when I went right, to that right. last he's meeting. The, he's, with the, he's with the law firm. Yeah, he's with the law firm, but he's right. also was the chair right. of the right. Board of Education at right. the state and right. stuff like that. Uh, the whole point, it boils down to those people at the state not hearing much from parents. Right. We don't need one or two parents. We need more, mm -hmm. okay? More and more and more. You look in general at what parents are doing. Mm -hmm. I want to hold parents accountable. Mm -hmm. I don't care how poor they think they might be because the poor word is put in their head, in their brain so much that they can't think of anything beside, oh, those Poor people call me poor. Those people at the top continue to call me poor. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, so what they did, it, it's like a, it's a cycle thing. So what we did, if we keep 
belittling somebody. Yes, they become that. Right. So to think about it, they're not strong enough to get up and, and exactly and, 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 and cast take their control. Bo- exactly. Exactly. So and that's what they have done. And they've okay? done that many a years. Well, of course. Right. But I, I, as I told you before, a couple of years ago, I went to Adamaski at the board board meeting and I said, mm-hmm. I would appreciate if you stop calling our children poor because you use that word poor to it's, get it's, more it's a money. Mind, it's a mindset. Yes, to get more money and more money. Right. All right. Um, just recently at Harper High, the the Board of Education or somebody from the state or from the Perkins grant, it's a grant that is given to school for things that you may need in your classroom right, and stuff right, right. like Supplies that. Right, right, right. Supplies and stuff. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Right, yeah. And they came in and do an audit and realized that our school needs so much things. So they grant the, st- the Board of Education a big fat grant mm-hmm. so it can go back to the classroom. Mm-hmm. Well, where did you think that money go? It never went to the classroom. Where did it go? Oh, into the into their general fund, and and then it disappeared. So the so the actually so I went to the meeting recently. They had a meeting at Elizabeth Pond with some legislative people, right, right. and I said to them, "I'm going to tell you something, guys. Please, when this Hartford board people come and ask for more money, you ask them what are their plans for this money." Okay, because the kids are not getting the money. It's going to more consultants, to the top people, or whatever they call bonus, whatever the case may be. But we can't continue to do this. Our children needs those supplies. I got to stop you on that note. We're out of time. Oh, goodness. We are out of time already? It seems like each week when we start, we run out of time. (laughs) As I say to you every week, if it's Tuesday, it's Education One. I see you guys on the internet. God bless, and I'll see you next week. Next week, matter of fact, we have the most powerful, no, the number two person of the state, the Lieutenant Governor. Her name is Nancy Wyman, and it's going to be a great one next week. Tune in, please. See you later. God bless. Public Schools. We care about one thing above all, the future of our kids. That's why we're dedicated to providing all students with the knowledge and skills needed in the new global culture. Hartford Public Schools is thriving. More student success stories, more world-class facilities, more university and corporate partnerships, more amazing talent coming and staying in Hartford. This is how education is supposed to work. Welcome to Hartford Public Schools, where the future is present.